What's up everybody, this is Master EN Gamer, and with the 2019 Archives event coming up fast, now is the perfect time to talk about the cool new skins we could be getting with this year's event. There's a ton of story-based designs that could fit perfectly into the Archives event, and if we're lucky, then we just might be seeing some of them in-game very soon. So, let's check out some of the best new skin ideas for 2019. First up, we have perhaps the single most anticipated new skin for Archives 2019, which is Talon Baptiste. We've already seen this skin multiple times throughout his origin story and sprays, so there's really no doubt in my mind about whether he's going to be getting an in-game skin to match. While Baptiste did only just release, and new heroes generally tend to not get new event skins so soon, we did see Orisa get her Null Sector skin immediately after her release, so I think the story significance of the Archives event in this case could easily trump any of the typical trends we tend to see with newly added heroes. Plus, with all the speculation about this year's event being focused on Talon and them maybe even getting their own new PvE mission, it would make sense for Baptiste to get a Talon skin, especially if he ends up being one of the playable heroes on said mission. And speaking of new heroes getting new skins, Archives 2019 may offer the first event legendary for more heroes than just Baptiste. Next up, we have Young Ash. Now, now, there's a few different directions the skin could go, and the first is that it may be along the lines of the prep school uniform we see from her origin story. While elements of this outfit are already implemented into her default skin, this event legendary would be more of the pure uniform without any cowgirl modifications. The other direction this skin may go, however, would be to make the skin more of a formal dress, something along the lines of a southern belle, like what you'd expect to see being worn by the daughter of two well the southern business consultants. This direction would certainly offer up a lot more variety in terms of the skin's potential design and aesthetic details, and I'm sure Blizzard could easily come up with something befitting of both Ash and her wealthy family origins. However, regardless of which design they go for, the most important aspect of this skin would, of course, be Butler Bob. While Bob already has some fantastic outfits in Ash's existing skins, I think everyone would agree that she needs at least one skin where he's a formally dressed butler. I mean, come on, it's even in his name, with Bob being an acronym for Big Omnic Butler. This more than anything is justification for Ash to get a new skin, so it's definitely an idea to keep your fingers crossed for. But on the topic of formal hero wear, the next skin idea we have is Formal Genji. Based on the Scion skin Hanzo got last year for the Archives event, this skin gives Genji the opportunity to look hella dapper. While we don't have any specific story references, references to Genji ever having had a skin like this, it's not hard to imagine that, as the son of a powerful crime lord, he would have on occasion donned an outfit such as this, just like Hanzo clearly did. In terms of the skin's exact design, I could see it going either way in terms of being before or after he becomes a cyborg. Many fan art renditions of him in some kind of formal attire tend to depict him as pre-cyborg, although I could imagine some very interesting outfits running in the other direction. If Blizzard were to find some way of merging his cyborg appearance with that of a tuxedo or other formal wear, I think it could make for a really unique and interesting skin design. Either way though, Genji has been without a new event skin for quite a while at this point, so I think a Scion skin or something of the like would be a great idea that would fit perfectly with the Archives event theme. Next up we have a skin idea which kinda exists in the Overwatch lore, and that's Prototype Mech Diva. Now this idea is in inspired from the Shooting Star animated short, and in essence would just be a prototype version of D.Va's present day mech. My idea of what this would look like is something similar to the grey unpainted mech we see her building at the end of the animated short. While this one isn't really a prototype, but instead is just an unfinished replacement, I imagine it's similar at least in appearance to what early versions of the Toki mech may have looked like. Once again, I could see Blizzard taking the skin idea in a couple different directions. They could go for making it a full-on legendary skin where the model itself has been modified to be less sleek and likely feature a bunch of mismatching colors and parts, kind of like her Junker skin except not nearly as barbaric. I see it as being more akin to Winston's Specimen 28 skin, where there's a ton of loose wires and older tech holding it together. Diva herself could have a less flashy jumpsuit, perhaps more along the lines of what modern day Air Force pilots would wear. The other direction Blizzard could go with the skin, however, would be to make 
make it only an epic skin and just recolor the mech to be less flashy, much like the unpainted one we see at the end of Shooting Star. In this case, they could even give D.Va the same outfit we see her wearing here, with the only model changes being the mecha baseball cap instead of her usual headset. Honestly, I think both would be pretty cool ideas for her that would fit right into the story-based theme of Archives. Next is a skin idea which has existed for quite a long time and isn't technically even a new skin, but rather is a recoloring of an existing event legendary, and that's Omnic Crisis Orisa. Seen in the Honor and Glory cinematic, this skin's design is identical to the Purple Null Sector skin, which already exists in game, save for the different arm attachments, which would of course just be replaced by her default weaponry. Given that Bastion by comparison has both the Purple Null Sector and Orange Camo Omnic Crisis skin variants, I don't see any reason why Blizzard wouldn't at some point just add in the orange variant for Orisa as well. The in-game model already exists, so it'd literally take the same effort as them creating a new epic skin. The concern I do see though is that since it's not a unique skin model anymore, it wouldn't feel right to add it as a new full-priced legendary skin. I mean, Blizzard has already more or less stopped adding alternate color scheme legendary skins to events, so adding in this skin would probably feel rather underwhelming compared to getting something entirely new. Because of this, I still think they should add the Omnic Crisis skin, but only make it cost 1,000 credits right from the get-go instead of the usual 3,000. And on top of that, in terms of the total number of new skins we get for the event, which is usually 6 legendaries and 3 epics, add it in place of one of the 3 epic skins. That way, players won't feel like it's replacing what would otherwise have been a brand new legendary, but it still gets added for the many, many players who would love to have it in game. Orisa will get a semi-new skin, Blizzard gets to add an easy legendary, it's a win-win all around. It would be a nice addition to help hold us over until they get around to adding an actual new legendary skin for her, which hopefully will be sometime soon. The next skin idea is once again one which tons of people have been suggesting for over a year now, and that's Talon Moira. Seen in her hero origin story, this outfit depicts her in a Talon scientist uniform, not too different from the Valkyrie suit worn by Mercy. Admittedly, there's not a whole lot to say about this one, as basically everyone has speculated it at this point. I think it's worth considering though that in the event where it does get added as an in-game skin, it very well may look a little different from how it's depicted here. For example, other hero skins that first debuted in comics or origin stories, such as Doomfist's formal skin, underwent slight alterations to better fit the expected level of detail and design requisites necessary for the in-game skin, but overall I do expect that if it gets added, it will be more or less along the same lines as what we see here. Two more ideas would be Savior and or Scourge skins for Doomfist. These ones would be a bit strange since they aren't actually the same person as the Doomfist we have in game, but neither is Orisa or Bastion in their archive skins, so I think it could slide. Plus, they're unique looking story based skins, so I think they'd be more than welcome as cosmetic additions to the game. Also, depending on how predecessor skins would be introduced and whether or not they would in some way coincide with the story mission of their given year's archives event, we could end up learning more about these two characters specifically. So far, we know a little bit about the Scourge and next to nothing about the Savior, so I'd love to see more revealed about these characters and the impact they had on Nimbani, Talon, and the world as a whole. Beyond the skin ideas I've mentioned thus far, we may very well start to see archive skins which depict heroes and story-related outfits that aren't necessarily canon. What I mean by that is something along the lines of a Blackwatch Mercy skin. While she was never actually a part of Blackwatch, the skin idea is still pretty cool, so it's possible that we may at some point begin to see non-canon skins like this in the future. Besides, I'd wager that Blizzard has at most another two Archives events worth of skin possibilities before they'll have exhausted all past canon hero appearances, so I wouldn't hold it against them to start branching off into different directions like this. A few years from now, once Blizzard has hit this point, we could also begin seeing Archives missions and events which focus on groups and factions aside from just the big ones. Be it the Junkers, Vishkar, Los Muertos, whoever, we could start seeing faction-themed skins for heroes who were never canonically a part of them. For example, one idea I would love to see is Junker Bastion. The Omnic heroes in general seem like great 
candidates to get post-apocalyptic scrap metal skins, but Bastion specifically feels like he'd just be too perfect for this. Considering the non-canon Nor skins, the possibilities are just about endless, which is why I would love to hear your guys' ideas for new archive skins we could be getting as well. Whether they're part of the story or not, be sure to leave your best ideas and expectations down in the comments below. Otherwise, thank you all so much for watching. If you haven't seen my other videos covering everything we know about the upcoming 2019 Archives event, such as the leaked start date and other details, then be sure to check out my other videos, which I'll have linked in the description and cards on screen. I'll be making videos as soon as we get any new updates about the event too, so be sure to stay tuned to my channel for more coming soon. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and share it with a friend if you really liked it. Subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and hit up the bell to never miss any of my future Overwatch content. This is Master Ian Gamer signing off, and until next time, have a great day.